Hi everybody, um, I hope you're all well. So today's lesson is going to help you um, with your second writing task and your second writing task is going to be writing a newspaper article. So today's title is newspaper article writing to persuade and argue. And as you can see, today we should be able to identify persuasive writing techniques, uh, complete the planning of your writing, which will be the lesson after this one, and begin to structure your planning and writing with all of the different techniques that we need to be using. So that do now, why is it important to vary your sentence starters? I would like you to consider that question, please, because that was one of your previous lessons. And if you need to pause the video here, you can do. So why is it important to vary our sentence starters? Okay, our key words today, we are writing to persuade, we are writing to argue, we are writing in a specific structure, and we are writing an article. So we want to make someone believe something that we are saying. We want to be really clear and make sure people agree with us. Structure is the way we will arrange our writing and that is in the structure of a newspaper article. And finally, a newspaper article is a piece of writing on a particular subject in a newspaper or magazine or the internet. Okay, so you can pause the video and Forrester techniques. I'd like you to give yourself one minute time yourself and then try and list as many DeForest techniques as you possibly can. If you are challenging yourself, list an example of that technique as well. Ready, set, go. Okay, did you manage to get these? So we have direct address, alliteration or adjective, facts, opinions, rhetorical questions, emotive language, statistics, a triple, exaggeration and repetition. I hope you all managed to get them and we use these language techniques in our writing in order to uh, make our argument clear and to help to persuade people to agree with us. Okay, last lesson you looked at newspapers and you looked at different things that you can include in newspapers. Um, you hopefully would have remembered headline and all of the things that you would expect to see on a newspaper front page or an article. So you've been working on your writing skills and you are going to be completing a non-fiction piece of writing in the next week or so. Pause the video and to please try and from your memory, think about as many newspaper conventions as you can. So think about the different things you would expect to see in a newspaper. Pause and off you go. Okay, did you manage to get these? So we've got a headline, we've got a caption, subtitle, main body, byline, introduction. You can have anything that you can look back on from your previous lesson. Okay, here's your task then guys. You are going to write a newspaper article for the Stratford Chronicle and the title of your newspaper article is going to be Coronavirus, What I Hope People Will Learn. So if you're up for a challenge, pause the video now and work out what the text type is who is your audience and what is the purpose? Pause now. Okay, our text type. We are writing a newspaper article. It is a non-fiction piece of writing. So it needs to be full of persuasive writing techniques, emotive language, facts, opinions, statistics, and things like that. Who are our audience? They are the general public and future generation, generations who are going to read about this um, really bizarre time of, in history, which is currently what we're experiencing, the coronavirus. Okay, what's the purpose then? Well, it's to inform people about the time of coronavirus and what you want them to learn and why. 
don't forget everybody you will have this powerpoint sent to you on class charts by your teacher so you can download this and refer back to this so you can keep checking that you are writing in the correct way okay um it's really important to remember that a good piece of writing doesn't ramble on, it makes a point. So as you can see in this picture here on the left hand side, think about a rough plan, go with your gut instinct. So I've just shown you what you're going to be writing, a newspaper article, coronavirus, what I hope people will learn. And now I'd like you to pause the video and jot down a really quick plan. So think about, what you might want your headline to be. Is there a fact that you've seen in the news or newspaper or reported that you'd like to include? Do you immediately know what you want people to learn? And if you do, jot that down. And I really believe in this phrase, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail, which is why planning is so important. Okay. So we know that we need to write a newspaper article. You had a look last lesson at writing newspaper article introductions, and we need to write to argue in order to get our point across and I suppose communicate our message. A written argument is not the same as an argument that you might have with a friend using your voice. Your audience are strangers, so it needs to be formal, fair, and well structured. You need to show that you have given um, the whole argument a lot of thought and you're being really clear and concise. So what does that look like I hear you ask. So a good argument looks like a few different things and I've numbered them here for you. Number one, you need to think about why people might not agree with you but then you need to work out how to prove them wrong so somebody might say fox hunting is traditional okay so you could argue back so was bear baiting also cruel callous and unnecessary and now banned so when you are writing to argue think about why people might not agree with you and then you can also include that in your writing, but you can give your argument back. Number two, exaggerate your good points. Use facts and statistics to make it more convincing. And then here in yellow and blue, we have an example of how to do that. Global warming is a massive threat to humanity. Huge areas of farmland will turn into desert, causing billions of people to starve. Okay, you can see my little question there at the bottom of the screen by the pause button. How does the word massive make you feel and why is it effective? So I'd like you to pause on this slide, consider number one and number two, and what makes them both good arguments and think about how you could use both one and two in your own newspaper article. Okay, number three, it's important to discredit your opponents. You can exaggerate and make people who disagree with you sound slightly crazy but don't tell lies. For example, some businessmen believe we have no responsibility towards the planet. They think they can keep churning out deadly greenhouse gas. They care more about profits than human life. Okay, so that last sentence there is really powerful, isn't it? and you're discrediting somebody that might disagree with you. Number four, use pronouns, talk about we and us. This will make your readers think you have a lot in common with them. Okay, the examples there in green, purple and pink, surely we all agree that this treatment is wrong. Pollution is an issue that affects all of us. Let's all work together and we can make a difference for our planet. As you can see down here in the left hand side, pause the slide here and think about why using pronouns is helpful in your article and what kind of pronouns you're going to use. And you could look back to your plan and add them there. Okay, what else have we got then? What makes a good argument? 
Number five, you can use questions to make your points. It's a great way to make people sit up and take notice. So these are rhetorical questions to make your audience think about your point. Does anyone really want to live in a world without clean air to breathe? So that's a rhetorical question. Or you can ask the question then answer it for yourself. And why doesn't the government do anything about it? I will tell you why. It is because. So that's a really powerful way to argue your point in a piece of writing. Okay, number six, use the magic of three. This can also be known as a triple. This is using more than one word to have an impact. Fossil, fossil fuels are dirty, dangerous and outdated. We can beat coronavirus, coronavirus as a society if we are sensible, caring and brave. Okay, I want you to pause the video again, please. And as you can see at the bottom by the pause sticker, why is using three words better than one? And think about these techniques and which ones you're going to be using in your own newspaper article. Okay, <clears throat> you have uh, your booklet, which uh, you're going to be using today. You're going to be doing page 61 and 62. Deciding on your argument for or against. When we write to argue or persuade, we've got to be really clear, really honest and really specific so people don't get bored and stop listening. So I've given you an example here of how to work out two sides of an argument. So the statement or the argument is testing on animals should be banned. OK, on the left hand side in green, we've got four. So this is agreeing with the statement on the right hand side in red. We've got against, which is disagreeing with the statement. So testing on animals should be banned because it is cruel and unnecessary. Animals have feelings and are pets to humans. Science is now more sophisticated than that. But don't forget point number one on how to write to argue that I've just shown you. You've got to think about why people might miss disagree with you. So people may say, yes, but testing on animals has been happening for hundreds of years and helps people. Animals are lower down the food chain than humans. Testing on animals has helped create medicine for lots of people. So that's an example of thinking about both sides of the argument. OK, I'd like you to pause the video, please, and have a go yourself. Complete the table. Your argument and the statement is lockdown should now fully end. People have had enough. I want you to think about three reasons why you agree with that statement and three reasons why you disagree with that statement. Pause the video, off you go. Okay, what did you get then guys? My thoughts were on the left hand side in green for the agreement and the statement, society has now been in lockdown for five weeks. The statistics and death rates are falling. People can still follow social distancing rules when out in public. Hmm. But I do need to think about the other side of the argument. We must only end lockdown when science tells us that it is safe. We must not risk the health of the highly vulnerable people in society. And some people don't follow social distancing rules, which means lockdown must continue. OK, email me, uh, Miss Mitchell Brady, and let me know if you got any of those ideas as well or if you had any ideas the same as mine. OK, here we go then, everybody. Please pause the video and you are completing the tasks on page 60 and 61 of your booklet. So open up your CGP booklet that looks like this and you are working through pages 60 and 61. Don't forget, look back on my slides here if you feel like you need help and you can self-assess your work with the questions, um, the question answers in the back of your booklet. OK, anybody that is working really hard today and you want to challenge yourself, here's an extension task. So I've given you a short example of a newspaper article and you can read through it. And can you see any deforest techniques used in the waggle?
and which DeForest technique is the most effective and why. If anybody can email me this work and show me that you've done the extension task, there will be a lot of class chart points in it for you. So I'm Miss Mitchell Brady and you can email that extension task to me. Okay, next lesson, you're going to be writing your own newspaper article. Don't forget, you have this lesson and the lesson previously from Mrs. Mahmood that can help you with your newspaper article writing. You need to make sure you are including a clear introduction, the middle and main section of your writing, and your conclusion and ending. Your piece of writing will be a newspaper article, about what coronavirus has taught people and what you want people to learn from the situation. Okay, so back to that plan that we made earlier. A good introduction is really, really important. What information are you going to put in your article and what kind of information are you going to include in your introduction? You can go back to my slide that has the tap on it if that's helpful but I'd like you to think about what information you're going to put where and you can revisit that plan that we looked at earlier on in the lesson. Okay here we go then your writing task you're going to write your own newspaper article what now next lesson I will be talking you through how to structure your article and give you some information to help your teacher will send you your written um, information via email and class charts. You will be provided with a success criteria. Do not lose the work you've planned today because you'll be using that next lesson. And it's really important everybody that you hand in the work to your teacher on the date that they tell you to, okay? That's why this is here in yellow. So hopefully that has helped. You've managed to do page 60 and 61 in your booklet and I will, um, be, I won't be seeing you, you'll be hearing me again later on this week for our next lesson on writing our newspaper articles. Take care everybody, bye!